on the web and in your hands. This is MDI TV. If you want to spark a brawl, gather together some lawyers, doctors, and others from across the political spectrum. Then say two little words, medical malpractice, and stand back. Some will argue passionately that tort reform is essential to control health care costs and that high premiums are forcing some doctors to quit. Others will argue with equal passion against limiting a patient's right to seek compensation and that while some specialists do pay high premiums, malpractice insurance and awards account for just a tiny fraction of the nation's health care bill. Yet despite the strong views, tort reform didn't really figure into the new federal legislation on health care, except for $50 million to fund some state demonstration projects to test proposed reforms. That mismatch between passion and action doesn't surprise some veterans of tort reform battles in Oregon. We have been trying to pass tort reform in one venue or another, and there has not been the political will. Um, there, there are many of us that feel tort reform is absolutely necessary if we're going to start containing costs in the medical industry. Oregon State Senator Lori Monas Anderson chaired the health care committee in the 2009 session as the Oregon legislature tackled health care reform. She says there were just too many issues on the table. Tort reform got shoved into the someday pile. While she says she's open to taking another swing at tort reform, she doubts much will happen until those at the very top decide to push. We have the same, same stakeholders at the national level as we do here. There's huge lobbying efforts on both sides of the issue that are uh, at our doors here in, in our state capitals as well as at the federal level. And it's very, very controversial. And until we actually have leadership at the higher level that is willing to let this go through, it's going to be very difficult to get through. More than once in recent years, the Oregon Medical Association has lobbied for caps on malpractice awards. But each time that a constitutional amendment allowing caps has gone to voters, it's been rejected. Immediate past president Dr. Peter Bernardo says they probably won't try again. To try to present a, a constitutional amendment to the voters that changes our system uh, is really impossible. It's, it's too complicated of an issue and unlikely to pass. Those failures at the polls make legislators wary about supporting similar measures to change the medical malpractice system. This is another reason why there's not the political will, because if the voters said this and we passed something, they would just refer it back to the voters uh, who would probably defeat it again, and that's why we have to be really careful and creative with um, what we are able to get through. But the issue isn't going away. In Oregon, a medical liability task force is working on proposals to submit to the state legislature. In early 2011, the bell will ring to start another round of legislative debate over tort reform. I'm Andrew Holtz, MDI-TV News.